So today, I wanna to talk to you about heat pump hot water heaters. And as you can tell here, uh, this one is beeping at me. This is actually my own on my house. And I thought, well, you know what? If I can troubleshoot uh, VRV, VRF, how hard can it be to troubleshoot something I've never touched before like this? Now these heat pump hot water heaters get a bad rep. And they get a bad rep because they fail probably two, three, four years down the road. And why is that? Because it has an entire air conditioning system built on the top side of this. Now this is a Bradford White. Um, I don't have a specific brand that I recommend or love. Um, I got this one because it was scratch and dent. But I have an error code and that's why we're here today. As you can tell, it's beeping at me. I have an F3. And the F3, if we look up in the service manual, says that the compressor has failed to start. Now, how does it know the compressor failed to start? Well, it's looking at amp draw, like a lot of equipment does, even inverter-driven equipment. It looks at amp draw from the compressor, and if it doesn't see it three times in a row, it's going to trip an error. Now, the cool thing about heat pump um, hot water heaters is they're a lot like inverter systems, and that is that they have service manuals and they have service modes. And so here I have, if I hold the mode button and the up button for the Bradford White, it lets me go into service mode. What does service mode let me do? Well, it actually lets me see a few things that uh, allows me to test components, look at thermistors. Yes, I don't even need a multimeter. You can hear the expansion valve modulating in the back right now. It has an EEV. Wow, a lot like a, an inverter system, come to think of it. Now this here lets me see the temperature sensors. If I cycle through the temperature sensors, it's displaying the sensor and the temperature. So let's say if maybe I had a question about, hey, is this sensor good? I could go through here and I could see all the sensors. Now I've already checked all of these and they are good, which is nice. I don't have to take my meter in there. I don't have to stick my uh, probes inside to actually read the, the resistance of those thermistors to see if it's functioning correctly. Another thing I like about it is I can go here and I can manually energize each component to see what is running and what isn't running. This is the electric heat stage one. And as you can hear, it's kind of hissing and whispering. It runs, okay. Heat, that's stage two. This is the actual compressor section. Let's try to see if we can run it. Electronic expansion valve is modulating. Now the compressor should have turned on, but right now only the fan is running. So now this tells me that I'm gonna have to take the top apart and get to the compressor to see what's going on. And then last but not least, but if I just wanna run the fan only, I have that ability to, to actually say, hey, is the fan motor running? Is it not running? So don't think that you're stuck with what you have currently um, when it comes to heat pump hot water heaters. Find the service manual, read the service manual, find the service menu that your piece of equipment has and work the problem through, one, what does the error code tell us to look at? But then two, let me test the components to see what else is going on. I'm gonna take this apart in pieces because I really wanna see what's inside. All right, two things, uh, probably three. Uh, really cool design. So if I take off the cover that comes off the Bradford White, um, you'll actually find here where I can actually slide open the service panel and get to the back components of the actual board. This serviceability is actually really uh, nice and thoughtful, so I feel, I feel loved as a technician here. Secondly, I found super secret instructions that were left for me uh, that says, technicians only, in quotations. So maybe I'm just a technician only in quotations. Uh, but this looks like this is the actual service manual that I had a hard time finding online, and it is. So again, with your piece of equipment, usually it should already have uh, the service manual inside. The other thing I'm gonna mention here too is that taking apart this unit, which I didn't talk about before, turning off the power. If you are not a licensed HVAC contractor, technician, uh, understanding the basics of electricity, a plumber, whoever you may be, um, electricity is not something that you wanna play with or play around. And again, I have experience in this, I'm very comfortable with this. And so with that being said, I did turn the power off before I started pulling any of the screws. Uh, despite what you saw in this video. Um, but yes, service instructions, we have them now only for technician. Um, I'm gonna keep taking this apart till I get to the actual capacitor that goes to this compressor.
All right, so I've got the unit of parts and I don't have a control board issue. However, I do want to show it to you really quick. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a bunch of uh, relays. Those are obviously the size of the wire, size of the relay tells me they probably go to the different stages of heating and possibly the compressor. I've got a thermal switch here in case the actual uh, system overheats, it will actually kill power to it. And then down there at the bottom, we've got thermistor, thermistor, thermistor. And then on the very end, right, three thermistors here, is my electronic expansion valve. And how do I know that? Because I am so familiar with how many wires it takes and also what color they typically are. Um, these are where you would check your resistance if for some reason you didn't have a service display that could show it to you. Um, this is the main components of the control system that goes to this. Now, I'm gonna obviously take this apart a little bit more, but you can see here, I've got my swing rotary compressor, right? Not a scroll. This is my accumulator on my actual compressor. You'll notice here that I've got my electronic expansion valve over on the other side, uh, my discharge line where they charged it. As you can tell, I suck at maintenance. And that's typically what you see here with your normal HVAC guy um, home unit, right? Our units get the worst abuse out of anyone else, so don't feel bad. Uh, coil is actually aluminum, which is not too surprising. You can even see here where we have um, from our technician instructions, uh, you have copper to aluminum press fitting, also another place to actually charge the system uh, that goes down into the actual hot water heater. And then there is my component that I actually need to get to, uh, which is my capacitor. This is not an inverter compressor. This is a standard solid state compressor, which means that it gets voltage from a relay on the board that I just showed you, and it turns on. It's not turning on. It is not hot to the touch, which tells me that the capacitor has most likely failed, hopefully, uh, to where it's just not able to get the compressor running in the right direction. So let's take it apart some more and I'll show you how to test that. All right, well, um, you know, 50,000 screws later, uh, we have it apart. This is our heat pump hot water heater. Bradford White, if you're watching this, please look away because it is very graphic. Uh, we have our control module down here kind of dangling. Uh, it was a lot of fun to get out. Uh, we've got our rotary compressor. We've got our thermal overload here on the top. This design, the, the compressor body overheats and it disconnects one of the windings, turns the compressor off. You notice there's no high pressure switches, no high pressure sensors, no suction sensors. This is a lot like a mini split. The only thing that it has to see the refrigeration cycle is thermistors, which is why it's also important to do a maintenance on things like this and ensure your sensors are reading correctly. But with that being said, I have here my beautiful DL599 UEI meter. Um, I love this meter. If you don't have it, I do judge you slightly, uh, but thankfully there are websites like True Tech Tools that offer them so you can go buy them. If I set my meter to read microfarads like we do with capacitors, you'll notice here I am reading zero. Wait a minute. Capacitors aren't supposed to read zero. What is this supposed to read? It's supposed to read 12 microfarads. So this capacitor has actually failed. Where does this capacitor, it's a little weird, right? Not used to this in air conditioning. Ground terminal on the bottom, and we've got two wires. Where your two wires go? Well, you've got your high voltage that comes in on your pink wire to your capacitor, and then your black wire, which goes to your start winding on the actual compressor. It's designed to, to build up that current and rush to kick that compressor started uh, and get it moving in the right direction. And again, this is a rotary swing compressor, which is very energy efficient, it's very quiet. We've got an electron expansion valve in the back that's designed to monitor superheat, right? It's gonna modulate to, to feed refrigerant to the outdoor coil with all our temperature sensors to modulate on that superheat to, to basically create, you know, cold air, right? This is a giant dehumidifier in my garage, which is why I love this technology. Energy efficiency, right, high COP, and also I get a built-in dehumidifier. And what's the output? I get hot water. Those are two wins for me. People hate them <laughs> because they say they fail a lot. This is an air conditioning system. It's no different than a refrigerator. It's no different than anything else, right? This compressor starts and stops a lot to heat this water. And so this is a wear component. This uh, actual unit itself is somewhere close to six years old. So this is something that I would expect to fail in a system like this. And so maybe there's this stigma out there that we think that uh, heat pump hot water heaters are supposed to last 10 years like everything else. Um, but they don't. They are not um, immune to uh, wear components because they are an AC system. Now, why did I make this video in the first place? The reason I made this video is to show you that just because you don't know anything about this, and I've never troubleshot anything like this before, doesn't mean that you can't figure it out, right? What are the steps? Get your technician's only service manual. Understand the model that you're working on. Find the error code. Find out how to go through the error codes and read exactly what's wrong with the system. And then take a systematic approach by checking those components. If my compressor won't start, that's my error code, there's two things I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check the capacitor, which is designed to start the compressor. 
but also I'm gonna check the compressor itself and make sure that it's not grounded, that it doesn't have open windings. Maybe the switch thermal overload has tripped it off. Maybe it's got a refrigerant leak and there's not enough gas to run the compressor. And so this switch is actually breaking the circuit and that's why it won't run the compressor. It could be a number of things. But you see here, I slowed down, I took a deep breath and I made a video. But I troubleshot this step by step on something that I've never done before in my life to get down to the root cause of the problem to find a solution for my client. And that client is me, and I am very happy right now. All right, we've changed out our capacitor here with my own special homemade capacitor. And let's test the system to make sure that she runs. And there you have it. Capacitor fixed the system, compressor is running. You can hear it humming away here. Uh, yeah, she's back to normal, right as rain. Our unit is now finally fixed and cooling. All it took was changing out faster. So again, if you're a technician out there working on things you've never seen before, especially inverter-driven equipment or even mini splits, remember it's this, right? It's a compressor, it's an expansion valve, it's an outdoor heat exchanger, it just happens to be water, <clears throat> and an evaporator. And a few temperature sensors mixed throughout, a control board with relays, with inputs and outputs. And that's all they are. And some thermistors, which again, like we talked about, which is resistance, which I have a video on, check out below. Okay guys, I'll catch you on the next tech tip, if this is even a tech tip, troubleshooting guide, motivational speech. I'll let you decide. See you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast, available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications, available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.